Hey guys, how's it going? Hey Val, how are you? All right. Ready for some football tonight? I guess. <laughs> We are. It's been a been a couple weeks for the Warriors. Yeah, I would imagine if you're winning, Mike, you're just chomping at the bit. Like, makes them sound like horses, right? <laughs> a kick, and there's going to be a penalty right off the bat and off sides, I'm guessing. Kickoff goes into the end zone, but we got a flag on the play. I don't know what you guys have been talking about, but I think the key to this game is going to be time of possession. Definitely. Culver's got to Culver's got to control time of possession if they want to win this game. And they, and they're good at that. Yeah, that's their yeah. So you know, coach Coach Zayner's gonna he's gonna line up and uh, they're gonna pound the ball. What, right. I don't know what what do they they pass one or two times a game if that. Yeah. And it's a power T offense. They've got one guy. They have two tight ends on every play, one on each side of the center. So it's the same formation every play. Wow, what a kick. Sean Pratt, nice run by Sean Pratt. He's got some room, and he's going to be out across midfield to about the what, 43 yard line. So, great way to start the game for the Warriors, Val. 58 yard return, and that was just he was really patient, read his blocks. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that Sean's probably one of the fastest guys on Winamax's team. Mm -hmm. The Warriors will take over from the 41. Russell Compton up under center. Like Hayden Clark in the backfield. Handoff goes to Clark. Wow. Plowing his way for seven yards, maybe eight. Picked up about seven yards on the play, second down. For Winnemac, uh, well, obviously, whenever you score first in a game, you help your chances out, but it's especially important for Winnemac. So they get one or two scores ahead of Culver and Forrest Culver, mm -hmm. who's, again, trying to possess the ball and milk the clock. Well, they can't do that if they fall behind, you know, 14 points or something. Right. There's Clark again. Can have enough for the first down. Good tackle. I don't know who that was for Culver. Looks like number nine, Ethan Keller. Ethan Keller on the stop. That's enough for an area first down. It's a misdirection there. Yeah, it's probably not out of the question for the Cavaliers to, to you know rack up an eight minute possession or you know seven minute possession. Right, right. Culver had two turnovers last week in their loss to Triton, and those were big. There's going to be a designed run for Russell right up the middle. He's going to get close to the first down. Now he got the first down. No, and the Warriors, they can't afford to turn the ball over because if they do, they're going to lose all that time with Culver. Right. You know, so right. the Warriors so, got to take care of the ball. Yeah, when you talk about time of possession that increases the importance of turnovers and Culver's going to jump off sides nope it's going to be on the Warriors that's going to be a five yard penalty against the Warriors that might slow the Warriors up a little bit Sean Pratt's Talking to the referee. He's going to come over and relay that to Coach Hendricks. The last two times these two teams have played here, Culver has won. Wow. i seen the, the yeah. three and three is the record. Maybe I, I read that off your uh, yeah, story. Yeah, they, they this played morning. six times since they've been in the same conference together and they've split those six meetings three and three. Okay. Win Winnemac won at Culver last year, so the road team has had some. Quite a bit of success in this rivalry. There's Jaden Terry, and he's going to be taken down in the backfield. Yeah, years ago, Val, we used to play them in the uh, powder puff, which was like a quarter or two quarters, you mm -hmm. know, but we didn't play them in the regular season. And that was Shane Schumann with the tackle. Shane's an all-state linebacker. 
Second and like, like 20, 20, second and 20 for the Warriors. Shane's their leading rusher on offense. He's their, I believe, is their leading tackler on defense. Russell back to pass. Wide open, Jaden Terry. And touch it. Nope, they're going to call him down just shy of the goal line. Great effort by Jaden Terry. Let's take a look at that replay. That looked to me like that was like Terry was his second option. Mm -hmm. I believe his primary read was Jaden Jones. Yeah, Terry just found a soft spot right. and set in it. He was covered, and Compton saw Terry wide open. Mm -hmm. Culver allowed some, you know, three touchdown passes against Triton last week. Their pass defense has struggled a bit. And there's Hayden Clark, and he's going to get in the end zone. You know, and here, here comes another, you know, weapon the Warriors have in uh, Max Murray. I don't, I don't think he's missed a field goal attempt yet this year. Mm -hmm. Or an extra point, my bad. I thought that was a two-point conversion. No. Yeah. Logan Schultz runs in. <laughs> you haven't kicked an extra point in three weeks, and <laughs> oh yeah, I'm out there. I'm supposed to be out there. That's good. I make it seven to nothing for the Warriors. Now we'll we'll see what the Warrior defense can do and if they can limit this Culver offense. What's that? We're going to cut to a break real quick. Looks like Ethan Keller and can't tell who the other one is back. He's going to get it. He's going to be brought down. It's like number 25 for the Warriors. Dennis Bennell. So here come the Cavaliers. That was Ethan Keller who returned the kickoff there for Cole. Ethan's playing soccer and football at the same time. Really? Yep. Wow, good for him. And he is one of their tight ends. Nine twenty-eight yard line. That's where the Cavaliers will take over first and ten. I'd like to see if the the Warriors just pack that box up there with. Right, I was talking with Coach Zaner from Culver. He, he says, we know that no matter who we play, they're going to pack the box against mm -hmm. us. We don't. And you, you, there's no offense that's quite like it. And the Warriors are going to well, maybe no gain. Not Schumann. I thought that was Cato, but was it? It's hard to tell. There's a lot yeah. of people in there. Yeah, again, they're they're packed really tight in there. And their guards, their guards and their center are very important in their blocking scheme. Good in them. Oh, we've got loose. A shoestring tack tackle. Who was that out there? I can't tell. Maybe Sean Pratt with the tackle. Nope, Jaden Terry. He's one step away from breaking that valve. Yeah. Brown is not really not one of their primary running backs. That was a nice run by him, though. I was talking with Coach Zanery. He and... Uh, Dave Sharp, the coach at Noblesville, are very good friends. I talked about this on Talking Sports because they're the two teams in the state that run this offense. <laughs> Only two, huh? Yeah. Wow. Uh, that was Schumann up the middle. So Schumann up the middle. Or Zane Bell with the tackle. Zane, a 6'5 mm -hmm. defensive end. Yeah, Noblesville is a 6A school and Culver is a 1A school, and they both run the same <laughs> offense. Just to the other side, be number, that's Russell in on the tackle. Good play by Russell. <clears throat> so 
So right to the line of scrimmage. And Schumann again. No gain on the play. Come the Cavaliers to the line. Nice pass. It's number 80. Marquez Anderson. When I talked with Coach Zaner before the season, he said he was going to pass it more. I didn't believe him, but <laughs> he wasn't kidding. Yeah, Winamac really just has uh, one guy back. They just have Jaden yeah. Terry back. You know, Tucker Fisher is a senior in his fourth year as a starter. I mean, he knows what he's doing back there. Yeah. He, he trusts him completely. going to be a first down. And Schumann. I'm really impressed with Culver's offense so far. And come the Cavaliers. 16 seconds on the time clock. Again, coaches, you know, they, they study film. They're looking for patterns or trends, and there, there are no trends with Culver. Yeah. Russell that was excellent that. defense. Somebody went flying there. You know, Val, we've seen Winnemac on first down, I think, every time. Either stuff him for a loss or, yeah. or uh, no gain, and doesn't seem to phase Culver. Yeah. They're, uh, they're going to... They're they're happy with their offense and they're they're going to run it. Yeah, there was a there was a very yeah. I mean, I, you know, Coach Hendricks talked about there's no kind of pattern with what um, Culver does. I talked with Coach Zaner. He said, "Boy, Olds and Schultz, those are two guys we have mm -hmm. to be very mindful of." There. There's another same pass. So. It's going to be third and five now. That's almost like a long handoff, really. It is. I mean, it's there's really not much you can do to stop it. And now they're uh, yeah, now they're going to go right back to mm -hmm. the to the ground. Mm -hmm. Marquez Anderson's brother, Marcellus Anderson, plays college football at uh, Grand Valley State. Oh wow! Yeah, Marquez is the little brother in that equation. Marquez is a great big man. Job. Oh man. That Zane was big Bell. Time. You know, Zane really came on the end of last year and was really playing some good football. Mm -hmm. It's like Michael Lamer coming into the game. And what is Coach Zaner going to do here? He does not like to punt. He does not punt very often. Looks like but he's it's, going for it. This isn't fourth and one or fourth and two. It's fourth and eight. It's like he's going to go for it. And he's down by seven. He knows he can't afford to fall behind by much more. Um, got a timeout. So he wants to talk about it. So 321 to go. Timeout Cavaliers. Yeah. He's distracted. Welcome, welcome back to Winamac TV here at Radovich Field. The captain with Val tonight. How's it going, Val? Hey, guys. Great to be Glad here. Glad to see you. What do you think of the frat house up here? We got some cup. Normally, we have a real nice food spread, but we, we kind of forgot this week. So we got yeah. some cupcakes, some mini cupcakes. And all right. Yeah, all right. That's <laughs> yeah, that, that's, you know, they don't have those at volleyball matches. <laughs> no, they don't. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yes. They don't have them at volleyball matches. They don't have them at soccer games. <laughs> So we had we that's, had that's ultimately what the Friday night lights are all about. <laughs> we had been going up and Tim we you know a bunch of us would go together and buy food and mm -hmm. uh, Tim called this morning and and uh, we just kind of forgot. Was that a pass? Wow! Great job by the Warriors. He was open. Is that Brendan Day? Oh, Jackson Rattabush. Yeah, Jackson Rattabush. Yep. 
Yeah, that would have been a first down. Some of the Warriors with pretty pretty good field position. Number 21, Braden Heater running into the game. I talked with Coach Hendricks about Braden Heater. He said he's got the best hands of anybody on the team. Oh, really? Yeah. So Russell off the shotgun this time. In a motion, he's going to get the ball. It's Jones, and here he goes. He can really go. Nice run by Jaden Jones. A lot of upside of Jaden mm -hmm. Jones. A little jet motion to give Jones a running start. Yeah, he's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Oliver Morgan was there for the tackle. The Warriors come to the line, and Russell will be up under yeah. center this time. They're doing a lot of things with Jones in this game. They're, they sent him out wide in a pass pattern. They ran him on, on the sweep there. And then back to Clark. Right back to Clark. Winnemac just has so many options with Clark and... And then you, you, you add Jones into that and, and Compton's arm, you know. Mm -hmm. Compton's J arm and Compton's legs are like two, legs. Di two, two different weapons. And then Jaden Terry, mm -hmm. you know, so Sean Pratt just came into the game. He can he can really do some things. Right. Xavier Holohan's had his moments this season. Yes. <clears throat> It's going to keep it, and he breaks a tackle. Nice run by Russell. Schumann on the stop. Heard, uh, heard his name a lot so far, Val. Ian Brown was right there. I mean, he had him, and that was just, that was just a big, strong senior mm -hmm. breaking a tackle. We've seen, seen Russell put some hits on guys last year. Mm -hmm. Russell's going to go out of the shotgun. Clark to his left. Terry. Terry's got a seam. Nice tackle. Schumann to stop. I second and four for the Warriors. So we got a minute 15 left in the first quarter. Coach Hendricks showing a lot of balance in the play calling here. Some, some outside plays, some inside plays, a couple passes. It's right up the middle. Not Hayden Clark again. Hayden Clark dies for the Warriors, close to a first down. Looks like he's got a Warrior first down. So, you know, Val, I was a little worried with Winnemac not playing for a couple weeks. If they had to have a little rust, well, it don't, it don't, sure don't look like it. No. I believe they started practicing on Tuesday. Yes. And that was their first day back after over a week away from each mm -hmm. other. Compton under center. Oh, Brant in the game. And to Terry. It's run by Terry. Big hit. It's Brown. Boy, that play was really well blocked. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to let it run down. That'll be the end of the first quarter with the Winnemac Warriors 7. Culver Cavalier zero. And we'll go to a break, Tim. I had a case. Welcome back to Winnemac TV. We're Routed Bush Field, the Winnemac Warriors seven, the Culver Cavaliers zero. And we are getting ready to start the second quarter. Um, was it second down? About three yards to go for the Warriors. So, what do you think so far, Val? I think Winnemac's really controlled the line of scrimmage, and I think Coach Hendricks has to be thrilled with that. Um, they've been able to run it inside. They've been able to run it outside. They had the big pass play to mm -hmm. 
to uh, Jaden Terry to set up a touchdown. They had the big play on special teams. Uh, defensively, they bent a little, but they didn't break. And a really big play by Jackson Radebush on fourth down. That was the big defensive play for yeah, the so far. That could have been uh, that could have been pretty bad. I mean, it definitely would have been a first down. And uh, Jackson was able to get his fingertips up and, and knock the ball down. And Shane Schumann has been a bigger factor <laughs> defensively than offensively, and I think that's uh, I think you'll take that if you're Coach Hendricks. That's a designed run for Russell, and he's gonna. It's like he'll get the first down. Like Austin Zayner on the stop. That's enough for a warrior, the first down. You know the Cavaliers have some. They got some nice size out there. Yeah. Uh, the commitment to the weight room since Coach Zayner uh, became the head coach has been big. Um, of course, Coach Zayner is not just the football coach; he's also the AD. Right. And that's something that he really insists on, not only for the football players but for all his athletes. He's doing a really nice job over there at Culver. Right. I mean, that's that's his alma mater. I mean, mm -hmm. it's Hayden Clark, and he's gonna. There's gonna be a couple flags. Clark, I don't think he quite got in, but we'll wait and see what the penalty is. To be a hold on Winnemac, and that's what you're scared of when you see the flags right there. I'll bring the Warriors back five. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. That'll put the ball in the 18 yard line of the Warriors. Okay, so it's a 10 yard penalty. My bad. Caleb Good in the game now. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we can get him involved. Caleb, uh, yeah. a senior, and I believe yeah. this is his first year. Yeah, this is his first year playing football. And go back. Back to Clark. Good tackle. Number 50, Su Summers. On the stop for the Cavaliers. That was a nice play by Summers. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a nice time to run a draw play, first and goal from the 18. When I saw and that, Summers didn't didn't bite on it. No, when I saw that play forming, I thought he he could he could get in, and Summers made a nice play. Back to pass. There's Terry again. Maybe the same play Val that they had ran earlier, and Terry kept running instead of stopping in that soft spot. So make it 13 to 0, pending the extra point. Really nice drive yeah. by the Warriors. And that's Jaden Terry kind of being able to, uh, not like Compton, but Jaden Terry kind of reading the defense, knowing there'd be kind of an open spot in the zone defense. It's going to be good. So 14 nothing, and now Coach Zayner. You just kind of feel like he's he's got to get in the end zone here, or get get some points. I don't know what their kicking game's like, but get something on the board here before half. Drive summary, 10 plays, 59 yards, took 437 off the clock. Compton to Terry, 16 yards for a touchdown, well. and the extra point by Murray was good. And Winnemag leads Culver 14 0 with 1039 to go in the half. And for Jaden Terry so far, two catches for 41 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, and has had a couple uh, carries too. Yeah. Got some yards on. And Jaden's one of the, he just does a little bit of everything and does it really well. I'd like to give a, a shout out to a former Warrior football player, Mark Nellens, who's watching. He, he could play. 
Mark could play, couldn't he, Tim? Murray kicks. That'll be a good one. He's going to go over the head into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. So the Cavaliers will take over on the 20-yard line. It's interesting when Murray kicked it off earlier. He kicked it. You know, sometimes you see a short kickoff, and sometimes it's, well, that's only as far as they can <laughs> kick it. No, that, that was a short kickoff on purpose to try a pooch kick and maybe try and catch Culver off guard. Keller got that one, but that one was a that one was a deep kick. And yeah. Was, and I know that Max has a great leg. He's a goal, goalkeeper on the soccer team at Winamax. So. Yeah, he, can put, he put a charge yeah. into that one. So here come the Cavaliers to the line. Mm. A whole bunch of Warriors there. Look like Logan Schultz in on it. Remy Schwartz. Hold a hand, maybe was in there. That was the first time we'd seen uh, Blake Thompson get it carried. It was Blake's another senior. So maybe gained a yard on the play. Yeah. Like a counter. I don't even know where the ball's at. There it is. That's Schumann. Mm -hmm. Yep. Schumann's 5'10", 205. Third and short. Looked like a little trap play there, but got him six yards. Schumann again. Still going. He's going to get the first down. Whole host of Warriors there, Chad. <laughs> getting a little crazy up here in the frat house, Val. What's in those cupcakes? I don't know. There's some peanut. It's, it's Gretchen's homemade peanut butter icing. Okay. <laughs> the way people are behaving up here, I think I better stay. Oh, this things. is this is mild. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thompson on the carry. Thompson again. Hmm. Maybe, maybe a yard. Good discipline there by the Winnemac defense. That was designed to, they faked to the guy going to the right, then they faked going up to the middle, and then that was a backside counter. And they did not let Thompson get loose for much. So a, a lot of options Coach Zayner has here. Right. There's, yeah, quick snap. There's Schumann. Wow. Big run by Schumann. Compton finally brought him down. Here's a replay. Maybe. I don't know. Rich Zider's down there. I'm going to have to tell him that Tim. <laughs> I'm Cavali so excited. <laughs> Cavaliers back to the line. They're going to get maybe three or four on that. Fifty-four coming into the, for the Warriors. That's uh, Dylan Brown, six foot, two hundred and five pound senior. Zane Bell comes off and gets a break. A pass. Good job by 56 to turn him back in. Olds and Terry on the tackle. I'm going to give Thompson a credit for a rushing attempt there. I thought that was a lateral. Okay. 54, Dylan Brown also contributed on that tackle. Couple yard gain there on the play. Again. 
Now that that might be a new play in Culver's playbook. I I've not seen them run that before. It, you know, it did open up. Looks like Bro Brant's going to come out of the come out of the game, holding his arm. Wow. Schumann, great run. And they convert a third and six. Mm -hmm. And again, Fisher executes his fakes really well. A couple guys from Winnemac, they, they didn't read their keys. They were looking at the outside guy, and Schumann was taking it up the middle. Yeah, great, great run. Broke some tackles yeah. and... Uh, yeah, he, he was about one broken tackle away from taking it all the way. Yeah, Russell Russell saved one. Schumann had 114 yards rushing last week against Triton. Wow. And that's a pretty good Triton defense. Yeah. So I'm not sure where it's at. That, that was Schumann that again. That's Schumann. I lost, lost track. Mm -hmm. Logan Schultz in on the tackle. That's the neat thing about high school football is that there are different ways to do things, and you can be successful at all the different ways. This you, is if your favorite college team came out looking like this, you might say, "Huh?" <laughs> this but, is a, this is a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, this Culver offense. Yeah, you know, some teams run a spread. This is a power mm -hmm. team. A lot of teams run a pro set. It seems that spread option has become more and more popular. But here's an option. It's just going to be taken down. Maybe a loss of a yard. That was interesting. I, it didn't look like a busted play, but rarely does Fisher carry the ball in this offense. Yeah. It's, in a lot of ways, it's, it's another thing when you talk about the opposites. I mean, Compton carries the ball a lot in Winamax mm -hmm. rushing, rushing attack, but Fisher rarely carries the ball in Culver's. It's right up the middle. On back to Schumann. Oh, that was excellent. He's going to be stuck. Brant. Yeah. Brant and Schultz. But yeah. Schultz finished him off, but Brant got there too. Mm -hmm. Great job by Bo. So you know... Culver's going to go for it here, I'm sure. What's the time of possession here? Do you, do you have any idea? Uh, I should have. Yeah, I can get it to you at halftime. Okay, that's cool. They've had it for over six minutes in this possession. Uh, watch Schumann here. And watch Anderson. Nope. So now is this an audible at the line? Is that what he's doing? or It's is he possible, just, yeah. Just trying to catch him off. Schumann, he's fighting. Yeah, not quite going to get there. He didn't get there. He had to get to the 15. Yeah. He had stopped at the 17. So it'll go back to the Warriors. So, again, uh, Val, the, uh, the Warriors bend, but they didn't break. See with the, the Warriors offense. Let's see if the Cavaliers defense can slow the Warriors yeah. offense down here. Culver took over six and a half minutes off the clock on that possession, but they came away with nothing. Wow. Warriors take over first and ten on the 17 yard line. It's going to be Jones. He's got some room. There's going to be a flag. And in the, the area of holding. So it's going to come back. Somebody down there doesn't. Is that, is that Big John? Big John doesn't like the call. I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> so. Or was he saying. Uh, I think the he was a version of play better. Yeah, I think he was a version stop, of play better. Stop committing penalties, <laughs> young man. And that you know that could be just not playing for two weeks. Yeah, you know, just like we talked about that that rust. Mm -hmm. 
Looks like Ray and Gregor's going to run the play in. Gregor, I, I think this is his first year playing football. You know, he's a lot of fun to watch on the basketball yeah. floor. Pioneer 6, Triton 0. Yes. There's Terry. He's going to get to not quite to the outside. Nowhere to go. Good defense at number five. Who was that? Tucker Fisher. Yeah, uh, Jaden Jones' responsibility on that blade was to block Tucker Fisher, and that was uh, asking a lot of. <laughs> yeah, Tucker is uh, Tucker's 6'4", 220. Uh, what's Jaden? Jaden's 5'9", 165. Yeah, that that was asking a lot. Of <laughs> Great containment by Tucker, though. Yeah, that, that was a really nice play by Tucker Fisher. Ooh, he got lucky there. Number, number seventy-four, Alex Zayner, was in the in the area. It's going to be third and eleven, and you got to think that Russell's going to throw it here. Caleb Good yeah. running the play in. Trying to hit a 55-yard touchdown pass against Culver last week, and that came on a third and long play. And that's that really bugged Coach Zayner because when it's third and long, you can't have the ball thrown over your head. Right. So let's see if, let's see if Culver learned their lesson from last week. Russell looking. Good, good coverage. Nothing there. He's going to tuck it and run. And he's going to be brought down a little shy of the first down. Let's see what Coach Hendricks does here. Under, under 220 to go in the half. I think with a 14 point lead, you just kick this. They might try to draw him off sides first. Mm hmm. So, Mr. Gerhart says they might try and draw him off sides first. He's not gone. Sure. He's still here throwing out some. He's. Guess what happened? I'd like to announce my retirement from sports casting. <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> and, and you, you know, Coach Zayner can't be happy with that. I mean, I. Yeah. Uh, when even the announcers are guessing what's going to yeah. happen. And I mean, it was Tim. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So, Caston is up six to nothing right now over North White. Comets are playing pretty decent football. Yeah, they've offensively they're doing well. Mm -hmm. It's, de it's then the defense end where they've been struggling to stop teams. And North White is averaging like thirty four points a game. So I know Coach Porter over there was kind of worried about we got to get our defensive issues figured out. They're short, it's a Terry. Still on his feet. Nice move. No, oh, Culver's saying there's a fumble. I don't know. I haven't seen a call from the officials yet. Nope. But Coach Zayner isn't happy. See, the officials come together, and they're going to give it to the Cavaliers. So th that's not what we wanted to see is Winnemac turn the ball over, but it's nice to see the officials get together and get it right. I'll trust your guys. <laughs> Replay of that. I did not see the fumble. I didn't see it either, Tim. You got that on replay? Yeah, it wasn't a fumble. It wasn't? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll take another look here. Okay. 
Culver still has two timeouts left, 136 to go in the half. Now Schumann, is, Schumann right up the middle, nothing there. All right, we're going to take a look at this replay. Right there. I couldn't tell. Didn't look like a fumble on the replay. Okay. Fumble. <laughs> Hell, hey, you know what, Val? The ball don't lie, does yeah, it? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Zane Val with the recovery. Yep. Big play by the Warriors. So the Warriors get the ball back with under a minute, and that is uh, with Russell Compton back there, anything can happen. And Winnemac has all three of their timeouts left, mm -hmm. and they've got a really good kicker. So, I mean, a lot of teams it's, don't even think about kicking a field goal. Right. But that's, a, that's, that's an option for Winnemac if it comes down to it. Compton's going to run it. And he's going to get four, maybe. Looks like Coach Hendricks is going to take a timeout. So 46.3 seconds left. They played it on a Friday, and the Valley <laughs> kids, of course, their arch rival had just canceled on them, and they were like, Rochester didn't want to play us, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, we had, uh, last night at the volleyball game, we had Steve Stricker on a camera. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was fun. We had a, had a remote camera, and Steve was down there on the floor with the camera. Compton. Perry just over his head. Could have been picked. That was Keller right there. Up third down five to the third and five. That was a that's a very hard pass to even mm -hmm. attempt. There, right. Culver's playing pretty good zone defense so far. Yeah, they're they're if not. If you remember in that last possession, they, they did a nice job on third and long. They're not gonna allow a deep pass right mm -hmm. now. So Compton out of the shotgun. They're going to get a timeout, Hendricks. Not sure what he got. I don't know what happened. You got any idea? I think it was maybe more of a clock issue. Yeah, yeah you know... When you cover seven high schools, when, you know, you, you cover soccer or volleyball, there are games mm -hmm. going on all, all during the week. But when it's football and everybody plays on Friday, you can – only so many games you can see. Quick pass. It's Jones. He doesn't get out of bounds. It's going to come down 44-yard oh, line. 33.3. Clock's going to stop. All the chains are moving. Warriors are going to hurry up. And, and with, well, no, they're going to take the timeout with the – what Culver's playing now, Winnemac's going to have to rely on that short pass. So three's wild on the clock. So now one thing that – Winnemac's down to one timeout left, so one thing Coach Hendricks has got to be thinking of is do I, do I save my timeout for the field goal? later right yeah i mean and, and, and do i tell compton to down it if we catch a pass inbound or if we, mm -hmm. if we get tackled in bounds you know and that's something that uh, not a lot of high school teams have that option to have a, a field goal kicker right you, you've seen you see peyton manning or somebody you know run that two-minute drill and you get kind of spoiled right. by it it's 
it's not not easy for a high school teams to run a two minute drill and, and get something, but I'm sure everybody practices it. I'm sure. Right, but you know, and, and you know, the kids are in school all all day, and you got two hours of practice a night. You know, you, mm -hmm. you just don't have that kind of time to to really fine tune it. Yeah. Russell under center. Hayden Clark in the backfield. Clark stays to block. Terry wide open again. And couldn't get out of bounds. Good job by number one for the Cavaliers. That's Cadel. Looks like 23.8. Clock stops on the first down, but let's see if they down it or if they run a play. He's going to down it. We're gonna do the hit the replay from that pass. Getting Terry just kind of settling in a in a soft spot in that zone, Val. Mm -hmm. hey, What's up, Coach? Got yeah, Coach Roth up here. Coach Roth up in the peaked his head in the frat house. Coach Roth is here, and you're having an amateur like me broadcast this game. <laughs> Jeez, I'm, I'm having him punt the ball, and they're getting first downs. There he is. Let's go. A nice pass. Got out of bounds. 15.1. And that was Heater's first catch of the game. Nice, nice route by Heater. Nice pass. Looks like the ball is about the 17-yard 17 17 line. So now I, you know, you can take you can take a couple shots at the end zone here, Val. Yep. Compton, he's going to lob one. Good, never seen it. That was a quick pass, so Warriors might be able to take two more shots down there, Val. And that might have been Good's inexperience as a football mm -hmm. player, not looking for the ball and the timing being a little bit off, and that, or, or maybe just the rust of, again, not having practiced that much. We're talking about a 34-yard well, a field goal for Murray if it gets to that point. And, again, Coach Hendricks still has a timeout, so he can run a play in the middle of the field here. Maybe. That, that's, in, that's in Max's range. Three receivers to the other side. There's Terry. He's going to get in. Touchdown, Warriors. Nice play, nice pass by Russell. Great job by Jaden after the catch to get in. And 5.3 seconds to spare. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Murray. Mm, it's going to be good. So Murray almost automatic. Drive summary, eight plays, 63 yards, and it took 52 seconds off the clock. Wow. Compton to Terry, 17-yard touchdown pass, and the extra point by Murray is good. And Let's make it 21 to nothing. You no, know, that's, a, that's a dimension, you know, we've, yeah. we've talked about Clark and, and Jones, Terry out of the backfield, but, you know, you get Russell throwing. Russell's, you know, is, what, three and a half years as a starter. Um, he can really throw the ball around the field. Yeah, and... It was kind of those combo routes where one guy went deep, so the Culver guys were respecting the guy that went deep, and then I think Jones ran kind of like a little screen pass route, and then Terry was kind of the intermediate guy, and, you know, that's a lot you have to handle for Culver. So mm -hmm. you call that, I guess they call it the route tree or the route combination. Yeah. And uh, Winamac ran that to perfection there. Yeah. 
you know, we, we've seen Russell's passing ability uh, at the regional game last year. I don't know if you were yeah. here or not, but boy, that was, towards no, the end of the game, one, it was it was uh, fun to watch. I was at the Pioneer Regional that night. Okay. When they beat Andrean. But I hated missing that game, the LCC game here. Murray kicks it deep again. Keller over his head. I think he touched it. No. Once it goes into the end zone, yeah. it's... Oh, they can touch it. It's the yeah, they can touch it, but once it goes into the end okay. zone, uh, they blow the whistle. Looks like the Cavaliers will have it. First and ten with five seconds to go on the 20-yard line. So, yeah, probably probably just give it to Schumann here and let it run out, I think. not already done so. Ask at this time that all of the homecoming candidates... And their families or escorts, please be at the north end of the stadium. The Cavaliers are going to, it's number one. Jason Cadle, got maybe nine on the play, eight or nine. His greatest memory while at WCHS is going to regionals for the discus competition. Ladies and gentlemen, once again in front of you now, let me introduce you to Mr. Bo Brandt. There's Bo Brandt. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Mr. Russell Compton. So next is Russell Compton. Russell is escorted by his parents, Chad and April Compton. And we got the Chad Compton and his mom, April, escorting him. His plans are to attend a school for sports science. His favorite memory while at WCHS is breaking the all-time passing record. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of you now, let me introduce you to Mr. Russell Compton. And there's Russell. Next, let me introduce you to Mr. Daniel Matthews. Daniel Matthews is next. Mr. Matthews' first future plans are to move out of Indiana and begin a career in construction. His greatest memories of while at Winnemac High School are every day before sixth grade. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Mr. Daniel Matthews. So Daniel Matthews. Our next candidate, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Mr. Sean Pratt. Sean Pratt is next. Sean is being escorted this evening by his parents, Gary and Sandy Pratt. Sean escorted by his parents, Gary and Sandy Pratt. Sean's future plans are to attend a school for kinesiology. His favorite memory while at WCH is CHS is Mr. Rail spitting bars at a shout out. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of you now, let me introduce you to Mr. Sean Pratt. Here's Sean Pratt. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Mr. Jaden Terry. And Jaden Terry. He is being escorted tonight by his parents, Jim and Tara Terry. Escorted by his parents, Jimmy and Tara Terry. Jaden's future plans are to join the ROTC at Purdue University. His greatest memory while at WCHS is last year during winning the football sectional championship at North Judson. Ladies and gentlemen, in front of you now, let me introduce you one more time to Mr. Jaden Terry. So there's Jaden Terry. Mrs. 
a little bit fancy. So, but a freshman year, a better experience, and uh, now she knows. And Don't mind me, I'm just learning. No, that's cool. It's fairly intuitive. Yeah. No, Tim does a Tim does a good job with that. Suspenseful pause. Let me introduce you to your 2021 homecoming king. His name is Daniel Matthews. Wow, so Daniel Matthews is gonna win the homecoming king. Good for Daniel. Congratulations. So congratulations to Daniel. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you at this time to the females in our homecoming court. Let me first introduce you to Miss Kirsten Calloway. Here comes Kirsten Calloway. Kirsten is being escorted this evening by her parents, Don and Teresa Calloway. Kirsten escorted by her uh, parents, Donnie and Kirsten Teresa. Plans are to attend Purdue University we had Donnie on the air last uh, home game. Her favorite memory while at WCHS is setting the bus alarm off at an FFA convention at 1 in the morning with Mrs. Belcher. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you once again to Miss... Kirsten Calloway. <laughs> next, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to our next candidate, Miss Kaya Campbell. Miss Kaya Campbell's next. Kaya is being escorted this evening by her parents, Aaron and Tasha Campbell. Kaya is escorted by her parents, Aaron and Tasha Campbell. Kaya's future plans would she would like to attend Butler University to study pharmacy so, she, so that she could become an ambulatory pharmacist. Her favorite memory while at WCHS is beating Hebron during softball season, her last year softball sectional last year. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, let me introduce you to Miss Kaya Campbell. Hey coach. Good to see you. Hey Val, can you give Coach the sure? Consent? We'll get Coach on. What's that? Get you on. Next, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Miss Kate Collins. What's up, Coach? How are you? Good. How are you? Well, I'm pretty happy right now. Yeah, I know, nothing. right? Uh, we're looking pretty good. We are. We uh, Al and I were talking a little bit. Maybe there was some rust, but uh, I tell you, there isn't. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, I'll tell you, I I didn't know how the kids would come out and play. Right. And I think the the penalties that we've had is because of we haven't played in a couple played. weeks. Yeah, and you know, for, but for the most part, it, you know, they've dialed in and, and yeah. been very effective with what they're doing. They've had a couple of miscues, but that's mm -hmm. I mean, you have miscues when you practice every day, too, right? So. Yeah, no, it was uh, we were uh, we were talking before the game when we were wondering if there was going to be any rust, and what well, it sure didn't look like it. No, no, you I know? thought the, I thought the kids have handled it very well. And, yeah. Um, but it also, you know, not being able to play for two weeks also makes you hungry. Yeah, it and, does. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure, um, you know, I'm sure that was talked about in the locker room before and all week long. <laughs> and now and, and you get so, to see it. And, and that's something that's not normal, not playing two weeks. No. You know, I mean, no, that's, when you coach it, you maybe miss one week uh, over the years, maybe. Yeah. If, and that yeah. was probably pretty rare. There's, you know, missing time off like this. You you know you don't know what to do. Do we give mm -hmm. them the night off? Do we do we go back to basics? Do we work on new plays? You know, are we going to play? Are we not going to play? And it's I'm I'm telling you I'm glad I retired when I did because I don't think as an old man here I don't think I can handle this. You know the uh, the weapons we have. You know I mean it's you know we know Russell can throw the ball, but uh, with with Clark and Jones coming on now and then Jaden Terry and. It's, it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, and it all starts up front. Those guys up front yeah. are doing an excellent job uh, as far as protection goes and uh, opening up the running game. And, and you're right, we're a, we're a multi-weapon type mm -hmm. team. This, it's, it's, they're fun to watch. They are. You, you know, you don't know if they're going to run it, they're going to throw it, they're going to pitch it, or 
or just what. But and uh, I tell you, I've en- I've enjoyed watching Culver's offense. It's something different. It's it's fun to watch, and uh, it, it it doesn't seem like it should be twenty one to nothing with well, the time they've ate. You know, yeah. The clock. And I'll tell you, we're lucky we got that turnover there right before half and mm-hmm. able to punch that one in because fourteen to nothing doesn't sound like much, uh, but I'm telling you, that was a lot closer than. I mean, I, I said that wrong. 14 to nothing sounds like you got a little bit of a, a, a gap there, mm-hmm. but that gap can close really quick. So yeah. I think that, that third score was kind of a dagger stuck in them, and, and hopefully, you know, we'll come back out the second half and do the yeah. same thing. We'll take it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what have you been up to, enjoying retirement? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Seriously, I'm, uh, normally I'd be in Fort Wayne watching my grandson, um, but uh, – he had a, a injury in the second week of, of uh, the season. Uh, they thought he tore his ACL, oh. but fortunately it wasn't. So, okay. But now he's in rehab, and um, I told him I'm not driving to Fort Wayne for two hours to watch him stand on the <laughs> sidelines. So, uh, but his rehab's going well. Good. Um, he may be back in two weeks, by uh, you know, at least by the end of the season. So good. And uh, what grade is he? He's a junior. Junior, uh, okay. Plays for Fort Wayne Carroll. Uh, okay. He started at left tackle for him the first game of the oh, year. Good for him. So, yeah, he's doing real well. Grandpa's really proud of him. I bet. And uh, so, but with him being hurt, it gives me a chance to come watch these guys. So, yeah. And I enjoy doing this. I'm glad it's them and not me. <laughs> glad I put my years in, and now I can sit back and watch it and enjoy it. Yeah. Because I'm, I'll tell you. I'm sure they're in there in the locker room, you know, discussing what if, well, can we do this, can we do that, what if Culver does this and that. And it's, I mean, for the average Joe, it's pretty nerve-wracking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, you know, like a, you watch Culver and, and they push it, they get, you know, I think we, we the first several uh, – downs they were stuffed you know we either for no gain or a loss on first down then here they come they convert on third down and uh they just methodically take the ball down our yep. defense did a nice job we we bent a little but we didn't break well and they moved the ball a little bit because they threw the ball and culver mm-hmm. never throws the ball but they've got that big tight end and they just threw that little pop pass to him i don't know what did they complete two or three to him i think at least two yeah, yeah. Uh, two that i can remember and mm-hmm. um you know that opens you up a little bit so, uh, but yeah, Culver traditionally is just going to march you, march you, march you, march you, march you down the field, and and go from there. So, yeah, they uh, had a they had a little I don't know lateral out here too. We covered nice, a little yeah pass play yep. that we covered pretty nice. Yep. Oh, Tim's got us on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey, Gerhard, I got a face for radio. Dude, Get that thing off. So, there, so they they got us some new equipment. So Tim's got multiple cameras going here. So Holy he's, so yeah, boy. he's like a he's like a kid at Christmas with this thing. Is he like uh, <laughs> Dick Emberg from uh, NBC that's got all this technology and stuff going here, on? Here, Tim, you haven't it's talked at all. I'm going to give you. You haven't talked at all yet. <laughs> This is awesome. Well, here's the thing, Coach Roth. We're yeah. very sophisticated up here in the frat house. We got Justin Ruff, Andy Stepp. You got Chad Watts. It does says some pretty remarkable things. You got a really big vocabulary. And, yes, we have some technology up here. So we're <laughs> we're moving the right direction. I, I see that. You, you, you'll be competing with ESPN and ABC well, you, Sports. Well, well you know, know me, and, me and Shay have been getting some phone calls, but we're very committed <laughs> to what we're doing here in Winamax, so we're going to stick it out. So uh, For two guys that never played a down of football. <laughs> What can I say? <laughs> well, you know what? That's a good. That's that's interesting. You you're say that. Uh, hey, this, <laughs> I was gonna say this world ain't round, boys. You're used to playing with that little white round ball. Well, you know we. Are, uh, you know I think the. Did you notice that the White Sox? I don't know if you're paying attention. The White Sox just clinched their division. I know talks, there's a lot of Cubs fans that are probably watching right now. White Sox. And you know what I say to all those Cubs fans? <laughs> Wah. That's all I can tell. You. <laughs> well, evidently the. the What's the family, the Ricketts family? Yeah, the Ricketts family. Evidently, evidently they don't have enough money because, you know, they give away all those rich ball players and saving all that money or whatever. Yeah, uh, that's right. So for us diehard Cub fans, that's a really hard pill to you, swallow. You have a Cubs flag that you run up the flagpole every once in a while, don't I you? Do. Yep. But you notice the W ne- hasn't been flying at I all. Know, yep, and I've never thought about vandalizing that flag. I'm oh. just going to tell you. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you never have. Uh 
What I want to know is, why are you wearing a Maroon Sox fan hat, though? Well, that's because I'm a, I'm a Winamac guy. Oh, so you can order any color you want. You can order Sox. any color. Yeah. Well, so the I'm Sox thinking- kind of are like that, though. They, You know, one uniform's black and white, one's white, one's red, blue, and white, and then they wear shorts. And- well, you know... That, I don't. I don't know what to say about that, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you up here, though. How Thank you been you. doing? I'm doing well. I was telling Shay. Normally, I'd be in Fort Wayne uh, yep. watching my grandson, but he's on the injured reserve list, going through rehab. So, anytime I can come down and especially watch a home game, I like to come down and watch him. And uh, you know, John's done a good job, but John's got a lot of good assistants to help him out with yep. uh, the guys he's got working. All those guys. I don't know if you know this or not. All those guys played Winnemac football. Yep. And all of them, all of them played for me, with the exception of John. And when he was playing, I was an assistant to Rex Bowser. Okay. Uh, he played for Rex uh, all four years, I guess it would have been. Yep. So Now, do you miss these Friday nights, all that prep? and I mean, all the hours and stuff you put into that. You know, I was, I was talking to somebody down in the end zone just before I came up here, and I said, you know, I really don't miss this as much as I miss out there on that field. Yeah. Uh, Monday through Thursday. That's where uh, relationships are that's forged. That's where relationships you... are formed, yeah. And, you know, the highlight for the community is coming out here on Friday nights and, and displaying your skills, and that's that's really the kids' show. Okay. But out there, you know, you feel like you're in charge and the kids listen to you, what's going on and how to do things. And um, so I I miss the Monday through Thursday okay. stuff. And Wait. I miss, honestly, I miss being in the coach's office too. Yeah. Because that's where – you know, you form your relationship with your assistant coaches and, and other coaches and so on. And uh, that was, you know, when you do that for 41 years, you get kind of used to it. And then all of a sudden you don't have that fix anymore. And uh, you're kind of in a world by yourself. But another chapter of life, life goes on and I'm in a new chapter and enjoying it. Awesome. Fantastic. The, uh, <clears throat> you know, something you said, coach, and I, the longer I'm exposed to different kinds of things, different disciplines, different careers, um, you name it. It seems like one of the, the, the principles lurking behind every success story is the ability, the ability to focus on, cultivate, and nurture positive relationships with yes. other people. And yes. I don't care if you're a salesman. I don't care if you're a teacher, if you're a coach, if you're a physician, a nurse. Um, it just seems like that is the thing. If you're going to be successful, you better have a good team. Yeah. And a team's got a head coach. A team's got probably some assistant coaches, and they got a lot of players. And you got to be able to get along with those. Now, you may not agree with them all the time. And like family, you may have some knockdown drag out discussions, we'll call it. But at the end of the day, you got to be able to get along. You got to be able to relate to people. And if you can do that and have fun doing that, then you're probably going to be pretty good, regardless if you're, you know, digging ditches, working on somebody's brain, or coaching football. Yep. Yep. It really speaks to the importance of, of high school athletics in general, oh, yeah. right? I mean, high school athletics are, you know, if you're wondering why it's important to, to encourage your kids to do this if yep. they want to, I mean, wow, it's those lessons yep. that you carry on in life yep. and uh, how, how critical that is. Yeah, and and – this is going to sound biased, and I am, but this sport right here will teach you more life lessons, I think, than any other sport going. Because you know what? You get knocked down here. You get knocked on your butt. And most of the time, there's nobody there to help pick you up. Now, if you got good teammates, they'll come, you know, they'll come help the ball yeah. carrier up. But your whatever. mom ain't going to come out and pick no, you mom, up. And... Mommy's not going to come out and say, you know, everything's okay. Let's sing Kumbaya. Right. Um, and, and other things like, you know, discipline, hard work, teamwork, uh, just concentrate. My two, you can ask any of my former players. My two favorite words were always concentration and execution. Uh, if you can concentrate, you can execute. If you can execute, it means you've concentrated on what you're doing. And, um, I mean, uh, this sport in itself has so much to offer kids, young men, and even women on the sideline as managers. Um, but, but you're right, Tim. All, all high school sports are, are like that. I, I just prefer this one. But, uh, you know, all of them, if you're going to be successful, you, you've got to have that chemistry and that teamwork to succeed. 
So what do you think, thinking about this game in particular, you got to yeah. be happy with Coach, or Coach Henders got to be happy what he saw in the first half, well, I, really controlling the line of scrimmage and uh, con- controlling the game clock on it against a team who, like, their goal is to control the, the clock. clock. Yeah. Um, they're up 21 to nothing. You know, coming into the second half, what do you what do you say to your kids if you're Coach Hendricks? What do I say? I say keep the pedal to the metal, boys, because uh, you know Culver's going to come out and try and do the same thing. They're not going to change their game plan. So you got to be prepared to do the second half exactly what you did the first half, and that's control the line of scrimmage. Uh, let's eliminate the dumb penalties and hang on to the football. And if we can do that, we're going to win a ball game and stay undefeated in the league and, you know, a chance for a, a conference championship still. Yep, that'd in the be making. awesome. So, yeah. Be, I've always heard, Coach, that the second, if you're winning at halftime by a sizable lead, a, your character of your team really reveals itself with how you start off the second half. Yeah. Like where, where are the kids' heads at? Yep. And you really reveal who you are. Do you keep your foot on the pedal and show that same fervor? Yep. Or do you back off a little bit? You don't want them to. I, you know, going back to the last great team we had here in, what was it, 16, um, when a couple of those assistant coaches, Dalton and Parker and, and that bunch were playing, a lot of the ball games we won big, but at halftime we had fairly sizable leads, and we would tell the starters, hey, you're going to get one more quarter. So you play that quarter like it's your last one. Make it count. Make it count for what you want to do because the fourth quarter, we're going to put twos and threes in because you know what? They were at practice all week long too, and they they deserve to play some too. Yep. So, um, you know, that, that's what we always tried to do, come out second half. Now, sometimes, you know, you're dealing with high school kids, and when they look at that scoreboard, they see the big advantage and – you know, sometimes you got to get on them to keep the pedal down, uh, keep the pedal on the metal, as they say. But uh, for the most part, you know, that's that's what we would always try and do. Now, and how, the good teams could do that. Now, how about a game like so homecoming? There's a lot of extra hoopla, yeah. a lot of different emotion. Is that a distraction oh, yeah. or does that pump them up? Oh, no. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. Right. Man. So uh, that actually is an advantage to Culver coming into homecoming because oh, yeah. it seems like, oh, all this hype, everybody's going to be excited. Well, they're distracted, right? Yeah, exactly. And as coaches, we hated homecoming right. because you had the parade you had to deal with. Uh, you had the dance afterwards that, you you know, some of these guys were more interested on who they were going to dance with rather right. than, okay, uh, what are we doing here? Right, and sure. So it, it was homecoming was always a big distraction. It's one of those necessary evils from a coach's standpoint, but it's great for the kids. It's right. great for the community. It's great for the alumni. Probably the only group that doesn't like it would be the coaches, and that's, right. that's something they know they're going to have to deal with right. and go from there. That's just one of those things. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's like the day you hand out equipment. Every right. coach hates doing that. <laughs> well, and collecting uh, it probably ain't any better, is it? <laughs> exactly. That's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, i got to keep my jersey for my senior pictures. Uh-huh. i got to do this and say, oh, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> I had to get that in. That, come on, man. Come on. Well, you know what? I'm glad you did, Coach. I'm glad you did. Okay. Yeah, like you said, Culver's just going to come out and continue ground down, yep. aren't they? It's just a, it's just a, a pile of humanity out there as far as their offense goes. Yep. It's to me, there's nothing exciting about it, but it's just. It's old time football is yep. what it is. That's right. Well, We're, and the glory, I mean, so something I like about a ground game is that the glory really is on that front line. Oh, yeah. Right? So the offensive line, yep. how your line performs. And typically the fans don't really pay super close attention to line, but when no. you're just a straight running team, you start really paying attention to how those uh, guys up front are blocking. How they're performing, yeah. Yep. I told Che because he was talking about all the things uh, that – Winamac could do as far as throwing the ball, running the ball, whatever. And I said, and you know what? It all starts up front. Yep. You got to have protection if you're going to throw the ball. You got to get off the ball if you're going to run it. Yep. And, and Russell, the first half, when he dropped back to pass, tons of time. Yes. I mean, he could about yeah. had a cup of tea in the backfield before he <laughs> tossed the ball. So. Uh, they're fun to watch, though, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yep. Yes, they are. It's a good year. This is this senior class is just a, a kind of a special group yep. of kids. Yep. And, you know, in schools our size, 
they cycle like that. Yep, that's uh, right. I can just to relate a story to you. I can remember before we had uh, Pee Wee Football League here. I used to have a. I we used to have a uh, middle school camp for sixth and seventh graders. Yep, that would be next year's seventh and eighth grade middle school teams, and. I remember when my oldest son, Tyler, was in sixth grade, he talked, oh, I think 20-some of his buddies to come out for uh, football camp, which uh-huh. they all did. And I went home uh, one night after camp, after the first week of camp, and I told my wife, I said, you know, if these kids stick together, they're going to make Winnemac famous. And she goes, what do you mean? And I says, honey, this group has got it all. They got the skilled kids. They got the, uh, the linemen. They got athletes, and lo and behold, that was our first semi-state team back in 2000 that got beat by Fort Wayne Lures with uh, one step away from going to the Dome. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think that's this senior class at Winnemac this yeah, year. that's what I think you got to have. think that's that kind of class that yep. early on you could kind of notice that they were special. I better let you get back to commentating. Coach, thanks for hanging out with us, yeah, man. It's it always fun. good to see you. It is good to see you. Uh, Shay, you want your head? What's up, Tim? What's going on, Captain? Nothing. How's it going? I'm all right. Always nice to hear from uh, Coach Roth. Oh, yeah. It's always fun to hear from Coach Roth. Had to give him a hard time about his Cubs flag that he hangs on, you know, every <laughs> once in a while. He just lives down the road from me. A big thanks to Val for uh, being on the air that first half. You know what? I always love yes. seeing Val. Thank you, Val. I loved it when Val rolled his eyes at me on that fourth down, fourth and short, <laughs> and I said, they're going to try to draw him off sides, and Val just rolls his eyes at me. And lo and behold, that might just come up periodically, Val. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh-oh, Uh-oh, on, the, on the ground. I don't know. Everybody says they have it. Yep. We're going to replay that and check it out. Well, actually, we could press. Oh, it looks like the Warriors have it. Oh, that's the wrong replay. We'll just knock that off. That's not what the Cavaliers wanted to have happen. You know, I think you're again, right. And again, they were moving the ball pretty decent. Shay, I've decided it's so much more fun to do this when you're winning. You know, it just is. <laughs> yes, it is, Tim. I did tell Val that we had uh, Steve Stricker on camera last night on a, uh, the floor cam. Yeah, we, you know what? We ac- Val, we actually called it the Stricker cam. The Stricker cam. <laughs> <laughs> There's a big run. Oh, oh man. Well, you never like to see somebody drug down from behind like that. It uh, just looks like they've been in a weird way, Tim. But <laughs> Hayden looks all right. So, yep, a little shoestring. So, uh, talk to who did I talk to? Big John Wheeler, and he said Melissa Hansen was going to watch tonight. Awesome. And she's a grandma of Parker and Dalton. She was at the volleyball game last night. Oh, okay. She walked out, uh, Sydney. Good grandmother, grandparent Sydney. night. Yeah. Nice. So Russell, design keeper. Wow, Ooh. big stick. It's met with some resistance. Yeah. Great tackle. <laughs> Great sportsmanship, Val. <laughs> you know, we were just talking the other day. There's a couple of community members that said, why don't we emphasize sportsmanship so much instead of winning? And I... And I one community. Member, all right. So, well. yeah, I mean, but, <laughs> but, you know, they shook hands. I mean, that's good. Yeah. I respect it. Oh, man. Oh. That's some penetration. Yeah. Deep penetration. Stephen Pugh in on the stop. Nice crowd here tonight. It's a very nice crowd. A lot of social distancing. Had some help from Matt uh, Bradney. So I had, to, I had to look at your name because I know I'm going to mess it up. But Matt Bradney, new English teacher this year, helped with the production while I was down there um, with the camera. You know what? 
Okay, you did a very nice you know, job. And he's popped into the frat house and just kind of uh, settled right in. Yeah. Russell's just going to take it, ain't he? Puts his head down. I think, I think the Cavs thought down. he was going out of bounds and kind of gave up, and Russell wanted no part of it. Well, you know, if Russell goes out of bounds, there's consequences when he gets home. Yeah. Straight out of Compton takes him home and knocks him around yeah, a little bit. Yeah, makes him sharpen the <laughs> snowplow blades. and. <laughs> Because you don't let him use a grinder. He has a file out there. He's have we talked about the Chad Compton in a while? I don't know if we have. The it's dean of Winnemac uh, Visual Arts. <laughs> Chad got to walk out there on the uh, Chad looked good out there. Strutting out there. He looked really good. He did. Although Russell wasn't holding his hand. Did you notice that? <laughs> I was I was about ready to say something out there, and I thought, you know, I don't know that he would appreciate it. Clark. Clark's got some room. Oh, my. He's gone. Winnemac touchdown. You know, are you, Chad was holding up a uh, Compton snow plowing sign while he was, are you supposed to advertise while well, you're you walking know, your kid out? He's he's interested in, uh, man, Hayden just runs downhill yeah. here. He's a strong kid, but he makes yeah. really good reads and cuts. Mm-hmm. Great touchdown. Here comes Magic Shoes. Just signed a deal with Nike. So is there some smoke going on? Is there? Yeah, it looks what like the uh, smoke makers. That, uh, we're gonna cut over to uh-oh. the smoke here after this. Uh, that's gonna be good. <laughs> looks like there's. Oh, there's oh, the smoke. Looks like. It looks like. It's like Mr. Leverance is gonna. Put yeah, there might that. be a. <laughs> He's gonna confiscate the. Uh, yeah, they're the trying aerosol. to put the smoke out, and it's just. It ain't happening. <laughs> uh, all excited. of a sudden, nobody saw anything. Yeah, what are you, what are you talking about? We, nothing happened looking, up here. Looking around. <laughs> it's good to see an well, enthusiastic student section. Yeah, it is. It is nice. <laughs> Although, the, see, see you, coach. coach. See you, coach. Oh, there was a little whiff of smoke. Oh, he saw it. <laughs> I think we should do a replay of that. <laughs> Valley leads Whitco 60 to nothing at halftime. Wow. Uh, Valley leads Whitco 60 to nothing at halftime. White Sox lead the Indians in the uh, after the top of the fifth. Just going to put that out there. <laughs> well, good. That's good to hear. <laughs> So it's 20. Even Terry Francona cares who wins that game. He's at home now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, just to put this out there, the Cubs are losing to the Cardinals 3-2. to two, but <laughs> Cubs are in a rebuilding year. They're, that's right. Yep. <laughs> in the first game of today's doubleheader, a guy from the Cardinals had a broken bat home run. Wow. Are you serious? So broken he, bat home run from the Cardinals. Yeah. That's insane. So in case you're wondering if they're hot or not, Keller return. He's got some oh my. tackle there on the sideline. Yeah, that's going to be a, be a flag. Fl- I wonder if that's a face mask. That or a horse collar, one of them. He came down in a hurry, yeah, didn't he? Yeah, he got, he got whipped around Let's there. take another look at that one. And somebody's figured out replay again. Yeah, this replay brought to you by Rich Zy. Oh, yeah. Face mask? Yeah, it was a face mask, I think. 15-yarder. Yeah, that was nice. Let's just take a... Let's see if we can pause that. <laughs> All right, here he comes. Whoop. Crunch. Nice. All said and done after the penalty, the ball spotted about the 42 yard line. ball's going to be on the 42 yard line. <laughs> and here come the Cavaliers. Right up the middle. It's Schumann. He's brought down by a whole host of Warriors. It's hard, it's hard to tell in that pile who, who brings who down. Any idea how many yards Schumann has, Val? Oh my! He keeps stats along the oh, way it's too. Ama- it's amazing! Wow! 
Wow, he's still going. Oh, man. He just, he's hard to bring down. Yeah. Tough run off the left side to the Cavaliers. Looks like it's brought down right about midfield. You know, how about old Paul Dunn out there with the chain gang? You know, Paulie, we, we had a long discussion about the chain gang and the science behind it and uh, the strategy, and he kind of came in with a game plan. We were talking about it. He was really pumped up, and I think he was listening a little Eye of the Tiger, you know, on his way out to the field. And, you know, Paulie, Paulie's doing a nice job out there. Paul, so. Paulie, does, he, does, he runs the clock for basketball games. You know, and he likes buzzers. He's yes, He wants one yes. of those shirts that uh, I need more that? buzzer. Yeah. It's going to be a penalty, penalty against the Warriors. That's going to give the Cavaliers a first down. 89 yards rushing for Schumann on the night. Schumann has 89 yards rushing tonight. And he's just a workhorse. None of those were easy yards. So I talked to the Terminator when I was down there with the camera, okay. <laughs> uh, Paul Hedinger. He said, he came up to me and said, are you guys – talking about me looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger? And I said, well, yeah. <laughs> he goes, so he okay. <laughs> Somebody texted him and okay. let him know. But You know, and the Cavaliers are, are just a couple breaks away from being in this game. Um, Schumann got, got, uh, had a shoestring tackle Russell Compton made and kept him from going into the end zone. And then that fumble, you know, those two plays – could have been a lot different, and the score could have been a lot different. It is amazing how one or two plays can yeah. make a difference in the game. They, <clears throat> one thing that the Warriors have not done is give up the big play. Right. They just haven't, um, and that's really important. Right up the middle again. Wow, right up just the gut. carrying everybody. And I wonder about that big play so that – Early in the season, I'm trying to think which game it was, there were a couple of times where Winnemac did give up a big play in a game uh, for a couple of touchdowns where somebody got past the secondary, got a, a mm -hmm. catch um, in open field and where it was wow. able to go. But this is not going to be a team that's going to beat you in the secondary. No. <clears throat> it's going to be Thompson. right back up the middle not, again, that Thompson. He's going to be close. He might be a half yard yeah. short. Blake Thompson. Fourth and a yard. Blake's another senior, 5'10, 185. I don't feel like we've talked about the Dean of Compton enough. <laughs> he's just doing magical things with a camera. You know, he's just at home behind the screen. He's got the, got it's the either behind on. the screen or behind the wheel, the, the snow plow, but. Yeah, we do give Chad a lot of grief about snow plowing. I don't I mean, know why we latched onto that because he, know, as he as, hates snow plowing. As soon as the weather got cold, his whole demeanor changed. He's like, yeah, I hope it snows. I need to get out and plow. It's going to be a first down. He gets as excited about snow plowing as uh, Chad Watts gets about dismissing people. You know, I had several people on my way back upstairs talk about, is Chad going to dismiss us tonight? And I said, just just wait. It's going to be fine. So I said, the professor's got it under control, and uh, it's going to work out. I do want to give Chad, Chad a shout-out on homecoming night. He did a great job announcing. And he did. He does. Well, as, he does a great job announcing everything, but a little, little added workload here. Great stop by the Warriors. Good push by the line. You know, I'm noticing that this Culver line, who really was pretty strong in the first half, it looks like they're getting tired to me, Shay. A little bit. You know, you got uh, Schultz and Olds in there and Schwartz, Remington Schwartz, uh, Zane Bell. Those, those are some big guys that you have to deal with all night. Oh, that's going to be a false start. Yeah, that's going to be on the yep. Cavs. See that? They got a little flag sign on the TV. What? I know. This is legit. Hey, it's 28. To... There you go. <laughs> if you're keeping 
Yeah. yeah. So we're just over a minute away from the, the next dismissing announcement, I think I heard down the way in the frat house. You, you know what? Andy Stepp has been quiet down there. Yeah. Is he it could be another turnover. Pick it back up. We're going to take a look just in case. But hey, hey, Justin, is Andy alive down there? I haven't heard him. Okay, okay. Okay, I haven't heard him at all tonight. I think Andy Stepp's voice is a little muffled through the beard. <laughs> You, you know, you throw, you throw the beard and the skull mask on, and you can't hear the guy at all. <laughs> oh, they're back to pass. Look at that's, that's going to be an interception. It's going to be picked. Wow. Great pressure on the quarterback. Threw off his back foot. Mm -hmm. Caleb Good. Good to see Goody get involved there. I like the way you worked that, Tim. That was nice. Good to see Goody. I like that. Is that intentional or? I've just been waiting to say okay. it all night. <laughs> you've, 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 well, you haven't been on a whole bunch. I was going to say you're uh I know. I, I'll little, tell you what. It's nice straight. when Val's here. Like I was just kind of working on the production, but but I miss talking to you, Shay. This is <laughs> this is quality time. Right up the middle. I don't know who Hayden Clark up the middle. Looks like that's gonna that's do gonna it for, do it for uh, the third quarter. Yeah. So look at this. We're gonna put end of the third. Nope. We're working on it. And uh, I think we're going to jump over to a quick break cool. um, from a local sponsors. So we're still looking for sponsors. If you're watching, uh, really inexpensive. <laughs> well, welcome back to Winnemac TV. Tim Garrett, my part of the captain, Shea Caston, the dean of Compton, working the camera. And he is, uh, he is in a happy space. <laughs> he likes it when Winnemac wins, Shay. And, and it makes his whole week. During that commercial, we, we had a word from the dismisser. The dismisser, which I think he needs to announce not only – Oh my! Wow. So if you're in elementary, it's you like, can't stand up during the game. <laughs> it's not all fun. I did down there yeah. with the dismisser. I mean, this he guy, gets serious. He, he doesn't want those little this. kids getting hurt up here. <laughs> He's worried about it. There's Russell to drop back to pass. He'll pass Is that Ryan Gregor. Looks like oh fumble. That's gonna be a f yeah. yeah. Is that Jaden Terry? I don't think it was Jaden Terry. Yeah. I couldn't. <laughs> Gregor, Ryan Gregor. There was a fumble on the play recovered by the Cavaliers. So the Cavaliers get the ball back. That's the first turnover by Winnemac, right? Second? Second. We had a fumble in the. That's right. But we got it right back. <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, this week's homecoming has been pretty exciting. <laughs> the boys' volleyball tournament during SRT and today's parade showcasing many of our awesome students. And the Cavaliers back to work. The far side. And 30 Thompson. Got a few yards on the carry. <laughs> he doesn't miss a beat down there. You know, they will write songs about Chad Watts. It is going to happen. Oh, there's a fumble. Did he recover his own fumble? Yeah. Let's take a look at that. That was kind of interesting. So once again, let me run down the class scores. In last place of this year's spirit competition. Watch that ball just pop out. Boop. Six points. The seniors were third with 192 points. 
So I thought it was kind of interesting when we were talking to Coach Roth about how homecoming is actually a disadvantage for the home team because mm -hmm. it's really just a big distraction. Right. Um, I always thought that it would favor the home team just because of the extra, I don't know, energy adrenaline. and adrenaline, whatever. And, oh, my. Yeah. No flag. No, we're good. This couple guys got tangled wow. up. Let's see if we got that on replay. Let's see if we caught that. The Cavaliers are going to pump. It's away from the ball. Wham! Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That was gruesome. Jaden Terry. Ooh, bobbled it. Nice move by Terry. We're going to get a flag. I wonder if that was a makeup flag. <laughs> I don't know. Because I don't know. if I think if you give a kid a suplex, that's usually a, <laughs> usually a flag. Val says that's a two-point. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think he ought to be ejected, Val. Yeah. So they got oh, it's against the Warriors. Wow. Oh, man. Oh my. Wow. You know, Chad Watts doesn't like the call. <laughs> and that's important to take note of. <laughs> I think he's thinking about dismissing the uh, away team now. <laughs> Stood up, backfield. Hayden Clark up the middle. Short game Hayden Clark. <laughs> Second down and nine for the Warriors. Wyatt Wheeler runs out. <laughs> well, under ten minutes to go. Let's check for smoke screens in the uh, student section. Pretty quiet right now. Pretty quiet student section right now. He's offset. Oh my. Go, or who's that? Big run. Yeah. Zinski. Nice run. Who was that that ran? Jasinski. Oh, okay. Maddox? Mm hmm. <laughs> Compton comes to the sideline. Is that Max in there, quarterback? No, I think that might be Cash Roth. Okay. Hands it off to Buzinski. 13 match Buzinski once again on the carry. Gets out across the 15 to the 49 yard line. Second down. Looks like number 32, Cash Roth, the signal caller now for the Warriors. I'm just going to fumble it. Ball hits the ground. Not sure. And it's going to stay with the Warriors. Ball stay with the Warriors. Plus a couple yards on that one. So third down and nine for the Warriors. Third and nine. Like Logan Schultz coming out of the game. Number 23 running out there for the Warriors, Luke Dickinson. Okay. 
Back to pass, and he's going to be sacked. 32 cash Roth brought down on the play by number 40. That's Shane Schumann. Schumann with the sack. Loss on the play, fourth down for the Warriors. That brings up number 21, Braden Heater. So Heater's going to punt. The first punt of the night, I believe. I think it is. Yeah, Val's first punt of the night for the Warriors, anyway. <laughs> Braden Heater's really developed nicely as a punter. Mm -hmm. It's a nice punt. Take a call for bounce. And no return. When the Mac's going to down at about the 39. <laughs> See, Val knew it. Well, you know, Val, you <laughs> predicted that one. That was really good. Fourth and 21, and I. I do. I didn't believe you that they were going to punt, but you were. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun having Val in the frat house. I think he ought to just bail on Rochester and hang out in Winnemac. What do you think, Jay? I'd, I'd like it. So, Val, do you get any nights off a week? Or for Sunday, obviously, but. No, I work about an. I work only about an hour. So. Okay. So, but you're you're uh, you're some you're somewhere every night covering something. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's fun. <laughs> Thompson, he's got a penalty flag. Thompson's going to be brought down, but we'll see what the flag is. Not sure what it was. Like a, warning against the <clears throat> okay, signed line warning against the Warriors. Looked like a skydiving warning. <laughs> so first down, the play stands. First down for the Cavs. Yeah, I wish I had those kind of dance moves. Yeah. I think Andy Stepp should have queued up some music for that penalty call. <laughs> Schumann. Pioneers up 20 to nothing in the track. Pioneers up 20 to nothing. Wow. Pioneer up 20 to nothing on Triton, and two of their three touchdowns have been on special teams. Wow. According to Val. Wow. <laughs> with Coach Roth on the phone every week for 12 years. Yeah. Kid goes up the middle to number 42. That's Ethan Binion. Brought down by a whole host of lawyers, but not until he got enough to gain a roof on Kevin. Another Cavalier first down. Oh, come on, throw a shirt up here. Because when you ask him a question, you got an honest answer always. Yep. I think Val needs a Winamax shirt. I think Val does need a Winamax shirt. Maybe a couple of them. Give go to number 26, Ryan Bean. About a yard on the carry. Winamax really running a lot, of, a lot of kids in and out right now. It's nice for these, some of these younger kids to get... Uh, Get some varsity action. Another yard. It's like third and eight for the Cavs. Of 
quarterback keeper. He's going to be brought down in the backfield. <clears throat> Is that fourth and about 12? Yeah. Yeah, we'll call it 12. Your coffee wearing down, a little Captain? Bit, yeah, yeah, a little. You seem a little bit fatigued. I'm coming down. I'm coming down. You lack, you lack fervor at this point <laughs> in the game. Well, it's, it's it, you know, three oh, three, just over three minutes to go, and it's twenty-eight nothing game. It's. Hey, so uh, cousin Kristen Knott is tuning in to the broadcast tonight. So okay. that's cool. So, hey, Kristen, <clears throat> glad you're watching. What's, what's our next, uh, it's the 24th, we have a volleyball game <clears throat> next week against Rochester. Okay, are we doing that one? I'm doing Probably. that one. Okay. Thursday, right? Yep, I think so. Cool. And then uh, next week the football team is at West Central, so we'll be off. Yep. <clears throat> so we got two forty three to go. There's a big run. Who's that? Is that Bizinski? He's got some he's got a burst there. Yeah. Get up. First down. Yeah, Maddox boy. does. He's yeah, he he's a, a strong runner. He hit that. He hit that. Uh, got the ball and he was gone. Got the hammer tuned in. Oh, how's the from, hammer uh, doing? Mile. You know what? He must have been. T he's taking a break from uh, the book that he's writing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anytime he, I mean, and he's committed to those books. I mean, yeah. the writing. Yep. So the Hammer's an amazing author. On, just a, really an expert on a bunch of different subjects. Yep. I think he's, uh, what's he going to be on? I think he, uh, he has some kind of big book signing deal coming up. Like at a Barnes and Noble or something? I think so. Okay. Yep. I think it is Barnes and Noble's. So just under a minute 40. Ball's fumbled. That Max jumped on it. I believe that was Max. Number nine, Max Gerhardt on the recovery for the Warriors. Lost a few on that one, so it brings up third down. It's like about third and 16. It's like third and about 16 for the Warriors. So here come the Warriors to the line. Nice run. Is that Max? Nice run by Max. Broke some tackles. Kind of reminded me of his dad out there with the mm -hmm. ball. I mean, yeah. I don't. I think. I think you've still got a step on Max, but uh, it'd be close, Tim. Pretty close. Looks like fourth down. Ball spotted at the 38 yard line. And that's going to yeah. do it for the, uh, for the ball game tonight from Routabush Field Homecoming. Had a lot of fun. Yeah. Val, do you want to share some stats you took on air? Are you interested? It's up to you. If you're not ready, don't worry about it. Dismissing, baby. 
All right, what do you got, Val? Well, Jaden Terry was the big factor in the passing game. He had five receptions for 76 yards and two touchdowns. He had a great night. Yeah, Shane Schumann led Culver with 93 yards rushing. Uh, Thompson's longest run was at 25-yarder, but that was toward the end of the game, and by then it was already 28-0. Uh, Clark was really not – Hayden Clark was really not a big factor. You would think, boy, they're up 21 nothing at halftime. Hayden's had a big game. He really – wasn't that involved? I mean, Seems he's, like early on that first drive, yeah. he had a couple of big runs. He had six for 25 in the first half, six carries for 25 yards in the first half. And then on that first possession of the third quarter, which I thought was pretty big, two carries for 43 yards, including a 24-yarder for a touchdown. And so, let's see, they, uh, let's see, 43-66, adding on the fly here. I had Hayden with 67 yards rushing for the game. So not one of his bigger games in terms of output, but... On a per carry average, I think it was very good. I think he only had about nine carries, so it's about eight yards a carry. Um, yeah, uh, Marquez Anderson was involved early in the passing game. For Culver, I think he had what, two catches for 13 yards, but he wasn't really involved after that. But, again, just uh, the turnovers I thought were big. You know, Culver had, I think, three of them. Winnemac had two, but the three, again, Culver can't have turnovers. They had to. Right. We talked about them having to control the clock. The time of possession I had in the first half was 12.52 for Culver and 11.08 for Winnemac. Okay, so Culver but just it, barely it, had to. It had to be bigger than that. Yeah. It had to be like 14 to 10, 14 minutes to 10 minutes, or even bigger than that. Even. Right. They needed to keep the Winnemac offense off the field, and they couldn't do it because of the turnovers and, of course, those big passing plays. So those are just kind of the partial stats uh, my chicken scratches. <laughs> awesome. You know yeah. what? I'm, I'm impressed that you can keep stats uh, like you do, Val. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the frat house. It's always good Tim to and see Shea, you, Val. Great to be with you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for appreciating feel, it. You're not getting... I, I feel like I'm part of the Winnemac family. Well, you know, after, you're, you're after, a member of the frat house. After 17 years of coming to Winnemac games, <laughs> you know, all kinds of Winnemac sporting events, this is the coolest one ever. Well, definitely. you know what? Awesome. Yeah. We, we really like you over right. here at Winnemac. All right. Great to be here. Hey, thanks I mean, a lot. Coach Roth and... Coach Sweeney and uh, Coach Johnson, I've, I've met a lot of great people here, and uh, I, I, I don't get here as much as I'd like, but I can only be in one place at a time, but right. it's always great to be here. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. We, I, we enjoy you. you a ton, Val. Thank you. Hey, thanks and, to you at and, home. And thanks for making me look like an idiot when I said they would punt and they got a first down on, a, on an offside penalty. <laughs> you know what? That's that's just going to happen in the frat house, yeah, okay. so you gotta, you got to embrace that. So I deserved we, it. I deserved it. All right. <laughs> thanks, guys. i got to go right. interview some coaches. All right. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, pal. That's it for our broadcast. Thanks.